Hi, I'm Jeff Boyce Cars. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about the service history on Pablo, my Saab 9000 CSE Cartel Special Edition. And I'm also going to show you all of the flaws. This is a warts and all video. I'm going to show you all the different details on Pablo up close and personal with my Saab. And there's an XJS. That's looking quite good, isn't it? Anyway, we're not buying XJSs today. That's not my car. I just thought I'd park next to it. Right then, this is Pablo, my Saab 9000 that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace from a guy called Rich. I didn't really check any of the paperwork when I bought the car. I just sort of took it on Rich's word that it was a decent one. I'm gonna get a bit comfortable actually, take my shoes off. I sort of took it on Rich's uh, word that it was a good car, so I'm gonna talk you through it. I've done the outside video, which you'll see in a minute, warts and all. Now, a little bit of a story on this car. I've got all the books and manuals. There's loads of stuff in there. That's all the original service history, all the original book packs. We've also got stacks of paperwork, which is all here. V5s, all sorts, V5s, MOT certificates, um, and stacks of paperwork going all the way back. Now, what I do when I buy a car is I like to make a spreadsheet. So I'll put a spreadsheet together, and on my spreadsheet, I will detail everything. I'll tell you what I didn't do with this one, though. I didn't actually calculate the, uh, the total values of what we spent on it. Anyway, right. This is a 1996 car with 197,577 miles on the clock. Interestingly, it's a four owner car and all of that is traceable. So this car has been on Facebook. Obviously you've seen the, uh, you've seen the, the, the details for the Jeff Buys Cars video and the giveaway. And a guy commented this morning saying, that's my old car. So I got some information from him and he sent me a really nice message detailing some of the history on the car. He said he owned it from 2013 until 2018 when Rich bought it off him and I had it off Rich. He said, I sold it to Richard. It was rotten when I bought it for 300 quid. So he paid 300 quid for this car. The bloke had had it from near, nearly new. Now that's interesting because that is all tracked back through the paperwork as well. I'll get onto that in a minute. The first owner of this car had it from 96 to 2002. Then a chap called Ian, I think from 2002 until, I'm not sure. And then a chap called Simon. Simon had it until 2013 and it was Simon that sold it to Darren and then Rich. Ian, Simon, Darren, Rich. And the first owner, so that makes sense. Four previous keepers, one current keeper, Rich. I'm effectively number six, aren't I? And you'll be number seven. So first owner, Ian, Simon, Darren, Rich. Right. So Darren says that Simon was a friend of his and he says, I put new wings on. The rear end was completely rotten. I spent £800 having it all welded. Excellent welding too. I took the interior out and my father-in-law refurbished it all. I bought two spare donor cars to help me in the restoration and it basically had new everything. So this is 2013. I then had it resprayed in 2017. Not the best of jobs, if I'm honest. And I'll come on to that in a minute. Then I had a twin stainless exhaust custom, a custom stainless exhaust made the reason i sold it was i never used it i serviced it three times a year regardless of whether it was used it would comfortably do 150 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in around six seconds it surprised many focus sts etc yes i can verify that it is that fast i haven't done 150 miles an hour in it um i'm not going to go into that anyway so there we go so i had it off rich who had it two years rich had it off darren who basically restored it Darren had it off Simon, and Simon had it off Ian. Now, Ian did a lot of spending with this car. So there's the service history for the car. That's pretty much everything. So I've detailed there, and if you want a PDF of this, I can send it to you. You've got the service history here. Here's the notes on maintenance and spend. That's the note from the buyer, and that's the owner's history. So that's my spreadsheet on this car. It was last serviced um, in July of last year. Oil filter, CV, boot, anti-roll bar. Um, last thing it had in December, it had a throttle body and a boot seal. And then going all the way back, I mean, you've got the services go 10 miles, 6,000, 18,000, 19,000, 30,000, 41, 55, 72, 78, 90, 105, 110, 119, 130, 139, 149, 162. And then the service stamped tail off and then the receipts take over. So it's got essentially a full service history. Uh, it's mostly been serviced by the same people. Now, that brings me on to the next piece of paper that I've got, which is this. This is the leasing document for the car when the car was leased to new. So 
this car, we think anecdotally that it was leased to someone who was involved with Saab. We can't prove that. And if you know any more, then please let us know. Let me know. So this is the document which says when this vehicle was signed out of the leasing programme and it details all the work that it had in that time. So the first service at 6,000 miles was January 1997. And then you've got various services and adjustments and a few bits and bobs that goes all the way up to uh, 2001. And it says vehicle return 151001. So the first owner, I think, did 151,000 miles in this car up to 2001. No, that's, that can't be right. So that can't be a mileage number. Um, can it? No, I'm talking crap. Sorry, I'm talking total crap. 104,847 when it was passed from the first owner. So the first owner, if he was indeed involved with Saab, fair play to him because he did 104,000 miles across four and a bit years. Then it went to, um, we think, Ian from February 2002. So it was signed out of the leasing program in the August and then it wasn't sold until the February and it was sold to Ian. Now, there is a receipt for the sale to Ian in the service history for the car, um, which I haven't got to hand right now. And that's documented as well. And then the next receipt that we've got on there is I've got a receipt for when Darren sold it to Rich. So this car has a fully verified service history. It was restored by Darren in 2013 and 2015 and rich rich has spent a lot of money on this car prior to me getting it so rich got it in 2018 and i've got 340 236 522 60 309 53 126 41 103 262 140 165 so i'll put a note just here of how much has been spent on this car overall that figure's going up there now and now rich sorry about this mate i had to do it Here's the figure of how much you spent on it in your ownership, according to the receipts here. This is the receipts that I've got, and I'm sure there's some that you were lost. That figure's going there now. So, not a bad car, really. Um, that's impressive. That is, you know, as someone that enjoys going through car service histories, that's quite a find. That's quite impressive. It's, it's, it's you know, that that's about as good as they come. You know, yes, the service book wasn't stamped since 2008. Um, actually, 2005, the 2008 service wasn't stamped. So you could say it's not quite a full service history, but lovely story for the car. Allegedly, it was the chap who may or may not have been from Saab and then his son that owned the car. They had it from for a long time until 2013 when Darren picks it up and Darren could have scrapped the car. It could have dropped off the radar. This, anything could have happened to this car at that point, but it was restored and resprayed. Fair enough, not to the world's best standard. And I'll show you that in the walk around video on the outside now, but... Pretty good for a Jeff car, that. That is pretty good for a Jeff car. Also, it's got um, two fobs and two key rings. Well, it's actually got lots of key rings because you get the, uh, the Pablo Mexico key, which obviously, what an idiot. Pablo was from Colombia and he was killed in Colombia. But I just went drugs, drug cartel, Pablo Escobar, Mexico. Uh, and really, I should have done Colombia. And you get a Scotland key ring as well, because that's where this car came from. Hope you enjoyed that video. I'm now going to um, show you the rest of the car. Now that we've done the service history then, I'm going to show you a walk around the car. It's absolutely pissing it down today, but thankfully I shot this video the other day when it was sunny. So uh, roll the tape. All right then, let's have a warts and all look at my Saab. Right, it does look when you get up close, ah, it's not that bad, but there are bits of this car that look like basically I painted it. So cosmetically, I would repaint that front grille. I would probably do the bumper. I'd definitely paint the splitter. Um, bonnet's it's not too bad. There's sort of a lacquer bit coming off the top there. Um, you got that weird, that looks like a clip, but obviously that needs to be painted black to match the rest of the car. The mirrors, firstly, look at that piece of design there. Double stalk mirrors, just beautiful. Um, this looks like it's like got a wrap on it almost. So maybe that's a wrap. Um, anyway, that's gone to shit. So you're probably gonna wanna get that painted. This door handle's a little bit broken, but one does come with the car. It pulls off that, but it does still open. That's great. These, I would take them all off, strip them down and put them back on. Do it again. Uh, same with the door handles, that's what I would do. Arches aren't too rusty and the wheels are in very good condition. I love this little design feature just here. It's so 80s, it's absolutely ace. Right, cheeky rear spoiler. Again, got like some weird rubber lacquer peel going on on the rear spoiler. Uh, 
you know, that's not something that you're not, not gonna be able to sort out yourself. Look at this beautiful little design feature here. These like strafe vents in the rear panel. Absolutely beautiful, such a cool car. Uh, smoked lens that runs all the way the back of the car. This plastic panel here is just absolutely gorgeous. Just makes the car look like kit from Knight Rider. Two exhaust pipes, stainless, so you won't have to replace your exhaust anytime soon. What have we got around here? More refurbished alloy wheels in very good condition. This side's not too bad at all, really. Door handles are all good. Um, as I say, they look like they've been painted over by someone in the past. So that's what I would do. I would just strip everything back, get these off, strip it all back and go over it. Smoke the indicator lenses. I'm not sure they work for me, but they do kind of suit the car. And that's basically it on the outside of the car. Mirror's the same on this side. Um, that's a damn good looking car though, isn't it? Look at that. You just don't see cars that look like this anymore. Yeah, fair enough, all right, the paint's not perfect, but look at the shape of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. They don't make cars like that anymore. It's so very cool. You could park this at a car show alongside anything, and that's gonna look absolutely wicked. Right, let's have a look at the inside where it gets even better. So I've just had this valeted since our trip. Here we go. Electric seats with memory. Now, Rich did say to me when I bought the car that the seats have been treated, but interestingly, there's like red paint on the seat, but it's blood, isn't it? Because it's Pablo's car. So, you know, someone was killed in this car by Pablo Escobar and um, that's what was left. Probably not. Right, wooden steering wheel. I cannot get enough of that wooden steering wheel. I really can't, it's just so cool. Such a comfortable car to drive. Like, I can't tell you enough how much I've enjoyed driving this car. And you can see, look, 197,000 miles. I reset that when we collected this car. So I've done 551 miles in this car in two days. So you want to talk to me about high mileage cars? Don't worry about it. I did 550 miles in this car, driving barefoot on all sorts of roads, and it caused us no problems. The temperature gauge did not move. The fuel gauge was very well behaved. What a comfortable car. So in the back here, let's go around the other side. Bakugan card. My son's just got into Bakugan. Don't really know what that's all about. Right, what we got? Rear door pockets, electric windows in the back, uh, tinted windows in the back with a slightly darker tint on this quarter glass piece, which I think is a neat touch because nobody does that when they tint windows. They'd normally tint that all the same shade and the front window slightly tinted as well. So you've got a graduated tint, which is lighter here, a little bit darker here, and then really dark there. And it gives this car this sort of menacing Pablo-esque look, Pablo Escobar look. Right, these seats, Elmo leather, exclusively made for Saab. These are some of the nicest, most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. As I said, I just drove all the way back from Scotland in this car and didn't complain once. The kids didn't complain. Mrs. Jeff didn't complain. Beautiful in the back. Got a couple of little drinks holders there. Does that look like a comfortable car or what? I think it does. Right, let's have a look in the front. This door handle, oh, have I just broke that? No, I haven't. Right, the trick here, you've got to hold that bit in and pull because it's broken a little bit. Right, electric seats, which don't work on the passenger side, but don't tell anyone. And Mrs. Jeff didn't actually complain that her seat wasn't moving. So here we go. A nice proper handbrake that works in the traditional way that a handbrake should work. None of this electronic handbrake shite that they put on modern cars, which is completely unnecessary. Smokers pack in the back for if you want to have a little ciggy, but no smoking in my car, please. And then here we go, that beautiful dashboard. I'll show you the layout in this in a minute. Uh, things I would change in here, get rid of that flipping awful 90s, early 2000s Sony head unit. It's just terrible and does one of those demo things where it like shows you a movie as you're driving along, like early Fast and Furious. Nah, it's just gotta go. Right, the Saab panel with automatic climate control. Very elegant, I'll get this switched on in a minute and show you all. I got a clock, I got my info display, I got some heated seats. Being a CSE, this is basically as high spec as they come. The standard CS already had more equipment on it than its German competitors, and the CSE basically had everything. If I was gonna complain in here, I would like an armrest here for when I'm driving long distances, and I would like a sunroof, but that's a pretty small list of complaints, really. Look, catch just here, look. There it is. Right, 
<laughs> I bet that looked good one day, didn't it? I bet someone painted that once and was like, yeah, that looks ace. And now it looks shit. Um, but the yellow's interesting, isn't it? So you've no idea how much coolant you got. Thankfully, it doesn't use any. Some yellow hoses, some yellow pipes and stuff. Uh, you know, whatever. Great big dirty air filter down there, making all the noise, sucking in all the air. I haven't really cleaned it in the engine bay. Um, you can do that. But yeah, there's my engine. Right, I'll show you the other side, the boot. Clicky, clicky. There you go. I don't know what's in here, actually. Oh, look at that. All of Mrs. Jeff's stuff, because she looks after old people. And a parcel shelf. That's a pretty big boot, isn't it? Oh, you've got a caliper there as well. Um, yeah, there you go. It's got a big boot. Right, I'm going back inside now, because it's pissing down again. Lock.